You wouldn't download a car. <laughs> This is a 3D printed Lamborghini Aventador SV, and this is Sterling. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Dude. Good to see you. Thanks for having us out. This is an incredible project. You and your son started this, like, how long ago? About five years ago now. Five years ago. Five years ago, there was nothing here. Absolutely nothing. No frame, no engine, nothing. It just blows my mind that what I'm looking at is mostly 3D printed. <laughs> That's exactly right. Tell me about the process you went through in beginning to even consider how you and your son were going to 3D print a car. Well, so we started by going to YouTube University and your channel yes. and uh, trying to learn uh, about 3D printing and what we needed to do to even start this project. Well, years ago, I remember, I, I did a lot of really large 3D prints. Right. Now, we didn't have a big 3D printer, so we bought one off of Amazon. What'd you get? It was a little small uh, CR-10S. That's where we started, and we started printing in PLA. We got the model from a little toy that we used some calipers to put it into SolidWorks. So not only was this 3D printed by, by you and your son and, and a single 3D printer. Single 3D printer, that's correct. But you created the model as well. Yes, that is correct. From a one-tenth scale model, exactly. right? Exactly. And we did a little bit of, you know, we widened the, the car up so it's a wide body. Okay. Eight inches in the rear, four inches in the front because we like that look, kind of low and wide. It does and look nice. It, it does, right? But we didn't want to just use 3D prints because okay. we live in Colorado and it gets hot here and... Usually, does it? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> in the summertime, it certainly okay. does. And uh, the glass temperature of PLA is not that great. Oh, right. yeah. So having it exposed in the sun is not good. And plus, it's not very structurally sound. And the body is printed using the same material that I make little articulated dragons out of. That is exactly right. With a twist. It is uh, laminated, actually encapsulated in carbon fiber. How do so, you do that? So we would make small pieces, about a foot cubed, you know, depending upon the shape of the piece. And then uh, we take all of the pieces, little sections of a panel, and then we use PMMA epoxy to butt join all of those together into a single panel. It's much larger than a CR-10S, so you have to do it in pieces. That's right. And you used PMA to, to kind of chemically weld it together. Correct. Is it just sanding from there? No. So. We wanted to give the car and the body as strong a structure as we could, like you, if you were doing, say, metal or fiberglass or something like mm -hmm. that. And, you know, it's going to be on the road, out in the environment. And so what we decided to do was encapsulate all of the 3D prints in carbon fiber. They're basically the top is uh, three layers of carbon fiber. The bottom is three layers of carbon fiber. Just a fabric that we use, thanks to the aerospace industry. Then we uh, put it into a vacuum bag and use atmospheric pressure to crush it down. And then we feed in epoxy into the other end and then let it cure, and then we have a part. Now wait, you mentioned the glass transition temperature of PLA. Right. Now it's not compatible with the Colorado summer. If you have those three layers on either side making that sandwich, does that improve the performance of the PLA? Yes, it does, because that actually now gives you your strength and your structure. And the PLA has an added benefit of being sound deadening material inside of the panel. Because a lot I didn't of even think about that. Yeah, a lot of car guys who do carbon fiber panels will have to do something about the fact that the carbon fiber sounds tinny. And oh, you can, yes, and that's you can right. hear this, that sounds solid. And that's specifically because of that sandwich yeah. PLA layer. And I wish I had um, actually come up with that idea instead of going, <laughs> oh, well, that's an added benefit. <laughs> <laughs> A PLA and the CR-10S is what began the journey on this car. That's right. And you and your son spent how long printing? We had our CR-10S going for about a year and a quarter, almost nonstop. That's amazing because you took essentially a, uh, in software we have an MVP, right? right. Minimum viable product. And the exactly. CR-10 is almost considered like a minimum viable product. It's the minimum pieces to make a large format machine. Right. It's a consumer machine. And yet you had it going at an industrial pace for a year and a quarter. Yeah. And it survived. It did. 
Did it last the, the time it needed to to print for, all this? For the body, and then it died. So what I'm looking at, essentially, is how much of this was CR10 and how much of this is new printer? The entire body. So body panels, door panels, uh, the rear engine cover, um, the front uh, fenders, the hood, all of that was done uh, with the CR10S. But you said the CR10S died. It did die. Did you replace it with something? So I got a Quidi X-Max. Okay. All right, and um, they actually sent it to me because they saw it on the Lamborghini commercial that we did. <laughs> um, so hopefully you can link that in your description so people can watch that. Sure, it's I'll put a fun. link down there and we'll find that Lamborghini commercial. We'll put yeah. a link down there too. Yeah, yeah. That'd How many people awesome. can say that they're a part of a Lamborghini I know, commercial? right? <laughs> So with, so with that machine, though, you're not just printing PLA, if I no, remember you told no, me, right? No, I switched over to ASA, and the reason is is that we now are doing like interior parts and exterior parts, and uh, it has a higher glass temperature. Mm -hmm. And so I found that it actually can survive in the Colorado sun when it's exposed. And ASA is UV stable. And it won't be have the layers of carbon fiber. You won't have that, that sandwich correct. because it's an interior yeah, part. exactly. For a tour of the car, we thought we'd start at the front. And one of the things, I wanna make sure we get it to the audience. I wanna make sure it's clear. This is 3D printed in that the body, the internal panel, stuff like that. But underneath this is a custom fabricated frame, that correct? That is correct. Well, at the front of the car, one of the things I wanna bring attention to are these freaking awesome headlights. Right. Tell me about these. So these are actually uh, from a, a real Aventador and normally they go for about $5,000 a piece. A I, piece? A piece. Okay. I couldn't afford them. But Lamborghini was very nice. They loved the project so much that they actually donated these to the project. They look great, right? They look, they look amazing. I love those. Uh, the front of the car, gray, primer gray, yeah, primer if I'm gray. not mistaken. So this looks like a lot more sanding has been done. That is correct. Like a lot more. Yeah, and that's what we're in the process. That's why you see kind of the patchwork on the car is um, we're basically trying to get all the panels you know, nice and aligned, and so they open and close, and they have nice shot lines on them, as we call them in the in the car world. So when we paint it, it looks like a nice paint job. What color are you gonna go? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it white, black, and red. Oh, that's gonna be so nice. Yeah. So then, uh, before we leave the front of the car, there's one question I had to ask: Is that the windshield? This looks like what a Lamborghini windshield might look like. Did you acquire that from no, Lamborghini? No, those are about four thousand dollars. Okay. So um, this is actually a windshield from a Pacifica minivan. My Pacifica. It's the only thing as put together as I am. And I had um, a great uh, company called Chip Pros that came out and they actually cut the windshield for me. We're at the side of the door and Sterling says, I want to show you something. I do. Okay, I want to see this. What's the iconic thing of a Lamborghini? Oh, the doors, they go up. They go up like this. That is so cool, Sterling. This is so cool. This is one of the hardest parts of the car. Mechanically. Mechanically. Ah, okay. Because this is 3D printed. Yep. And the inside of the door has is a, metal is some for metal, safety. And there's uh, the leather work. I yep. remember you told me you're going to be redoing that. That's so, right. So 3D printing isn't the tough part. No. The hard part is suddenly does this door come up? It comes out. Yeah. It does. Oh. Oh. So it you does see come how out it's coming bit. out at about yeah. a 30 degree angle? Yeah. Yeah. This is custom. <gasps> Oh, really? Right. So a hinge is about $1,000 for a real one. So we had to come up with a mechanism on our own. That seems inexpensive by Lamborghini standards. Yeah, that's right. So, okay, Lamborghini has the hinge, the proper hinge, $1,000 a piece. Right. Then, But you designed your own. Did you get to glean any information from theirs, or did you just have to problem solve? I actually pr tried problem solving and okay. failed miserably. And failed then forward, right? Because I failed forward into my friend in Texas who's doing an Aventador who has a lot more experience than me. Oh. And so he said, no, oh, you should do your door hinges this way. And so he sent me a door hinge to try out and it works perfectly. Oh, that's amazing to hear. I well, know. actually, this is great too because you said your friend in Texas. Right. Sterling isn't the only one with a 3D printed Aventador. There's others. Yeah, there's like five of us right now doing these. Five of them. Yeah. So then the hinges from your friend in Texas are in this one. Correct. And they were great. He contributed a hinge to you and your build. Right. What did you contribute to anything of his? 
So what I did was I actually found a dash for uh, a, a dash hood that's going over the uh, instrument cluster. And I was able to get that for him and send it to him. Aww. So we do exchange parts and now he has a problem with headlights and tail lights. So we're gonna 3D print some for him. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's like a tight lit little, tight knit little exactly. community. Closing the door, I know you had to open the door. Is closing the door as difficult as opening the door or can I do it? You can do it. Oh, Just pull is... it towards you. Okay. You'll push it towards the car. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, slots in. Yep. Boom. <laughs> yes! This is the engine compartment. This is the engine compartment. This is Are called the... a mid-engine. A mid-engine, but it's at the back of the car. It's not at the complete back of the car. Oh. So like a Porsche 911 has a rear engine. This is a mid-engine where the engine is in the middle of the car and the transmission is behind it. First of all, though, are there any 3D prints within the engine compartment? Like, like that is, this that is not, is, No, right? this, is, this is something I got off of eBay, which is actually what goes in an Aventador. Okay, but the, the engine cover. The engine cover. Is 3D printed. Is 3D printed and encapsulated in carbon fiber. Okay, so I see a lot of like uh, welded metal. Yep. And obviously the engine stuff. And it makes sense to not have a bunch of 3D prints close to the exactly. thing that gets really warm. So tell me about that engine, Sterling. So you'll see that you, you asked about 3D prints in the engine. Bed. I did. I did. You see the intake uh, oh, cup yeah. there? That's is 3D printed. Oh, that's cool. So that's actually printed out of um, nylon carbon fiber. Oh, okay. It's cool to see a 3D print in the engine. Nylon with some carbon fiber. It yep. makes a lot of sense. That's not a part that's going to get hot. It won't get up to the glass temperature. Right, exactly. But the engine that's in front of it, this, this big piece right here. What is it? So what you're looking at, the big shiny thing right there, that is a uh, the intake for a V8. Okay. So this is what's known as an LS1. LS1. Right. It's a GM uh, V8 uh, aluminum block engine and normally goes into a Corvette. Ah. And this one is actually out of a 2005 Corvette. Okay. That I got from a junkyard. Oh, wow. You were resourceful for this. So we, we bought the engine. We had it... Uh, uh, delivered here, and then we rebuilt it. And what's your transmission? Transmission is actually from a uh, Porsche 911. And, and it's they not, match up, huh? Yeah, and it's, well, it's not, it's not actually a transmission, it's a transaxle. Oh. So oh, it's, it's a transmission, it's, way, right? it's it, no, it's still straight, but it's a, it's a transmission that actually has a differential in it. So it's all one package. Oh, okay. And the reason for that is, is because you can see where the wheels are. Right. Right? They're at the front of the transmission. Yeah. And that's actually where the differential is. And also there's a thing called an LS swap that people sometimes do with their 911 Porsches. There's a company that actually makes a mating kit for these two parts to go together. And again, that was the community that uh, helped us with that because I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I reached out to our community and one of the guys said, oh yeah, you just go to Kennedy Engineering and get the interface kit and <laughs> it's all good. So Wait, it's fantastic. I love that you said kit cars because when I was younger, I remember trying to look for an inexpensive Fiero to put a new body on top of it. Yes. Right? And that, that was my, in my head as a kid, that was my version of a kit car. And, and they still do that. Oh, sure. They still yeah. do that, just like a body swap, yeah. right? But you, it's not, you don't have a Fiero, like, frame under here. This is, this is a custom. Custom frame. This is all custom. Correct. Yeah, so the main part where the occupants sit is made out of 2 by 4 uh, 120 wall steel. <laughs> So it's pretty beefy. That sounds beefy. And it's heavy, I would imagine. It is heavy, but it's not as heavy as you would think. So what's the real Aventador SV compared to this weight-wise? Just under 4,000 pounds. Okay, and this is? And this is around 2,700 pounds. Really? Yeah. You want to sit in and hear how it sounds? Yes! Oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> yes! I really want to do this, Sterling. Sterling, I'm in an Aventador. I'm in an Aventador. And it's cool because it's yours. It is mine. And I still see 3D printed parts. Like this is 3D printed up here. Mm -hmm. This yep. is 3D printed here. There's there's so much. It looks like a standard dash. It is. It's a standard dash. And and these uh, the door inside. Door cards. Are, yeah. Door cards are, yeah. are standard. Um, steering wheel is that? No, that's not 3D printed. No, this is actually a real Lamborghini steering wheel from an Aventador. 
So when we did the commercial with Lamborghini, their director of marketing came over. And at the time, uh, you know, Audi is part of the VW group, which, uh, oh, right. you know, basically, mm -hmm. so they're all one big happy family. And there's, so there's a lot of Audi parts in a Lamborghini. And one of those oh. parts is the steering column. And so if you have an Audi steering wheel, it goes on to the Audi steering column that's in an actual Lamborghini. So I had a nice, beautiful Audi steering wheel. And the director of marketing looked in the car and he saw the Audi steering wheel. And he said, yeah, that's not going to work. And so he says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you one next time I'm in, in the US. And so about two weeks later, he showed up, uh, took us all to dinner, and he had a little gift for me. And it's going to be the only badge in the car. So out of respect oh. for Lamborghini, I'm not going to badge the car a Lamborghini. OK. But since this was donated by them, this will be the only badge on the car. Really? And it shows that Lamborghini is, is behind you. That's right. It's, I love that they're a part of this. They're not a knock, knock, cease and desist. They are, how can we help? That's right. The guys who are actually building the, the, these Lamborghinis, they actually uh, were talking about this project. And so then the higher ups heard about it. And that's when they decided they were going to contact me and, and we were going to do a project together. That's, so. that's such a cool story that the people who make these, the real Aventadors, loved your project and circulated it enough to get the top people, yeah. the C-suite kind of interested in it. Dude, this has been a, a treat. I feel 3D printed things, mm -hmm. but my eyes show me an Aventador. I'm glad it's, you enjoy it. It's still a trip, man. Yeah. I know you've got some work to do on this car. You want to get it finished in stuff. So uh, what are next steps? So the next steps is, as we talked about the front end, the gray part, which is the primer, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing is I'm going through the panels one at a time and block sanding them, getting them ready for paint. Once we get that done, we can work on some more of the mechanics and electrical parts of the car that still need to be finished and then the interior. And then we're gonna show it at a car show in August. A car show in August? Car show in August. Okay, where is that car show gonna be? That car show is gonna be at Bandemir Speedway, which is down south um, near Denver. August 13th, you can see what I just experienced, but in a finished state. Exactly. Hopefully. Well, this has been an incredible journey, and if you made it this far on your journey in this episode, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, Build all the Lamborghinis. And as always, high five. Nailed it. Start it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah.